Happy Frazetta Friday, Frazetta fans. Thanks for joining me on another episode of Frazetta Fridays with Frazetta Girls. If you're new to our show, please catch up and watch our previous episodes where I discuss the life and career of my grandfather, Frank Frazetta. In tonight's episode, we are covering the Frazetta connection to the sci-fi classic, Battlestar Galactica, a show that rode the Star Wars wave in the late 70s and, well, didn't quite succeed. In the late 1970s, science fiction was having a moment, thanks largely to the success of Star Wars in 1977. Space opera was suddenly back in a big way, and Glenn Larson's Battlestar Galactica was an attempt to capture that same excitement for TV. What was most exciting about Battlestar Galactica, well, to us, is that ABC turned to my grandpa to help promote the show. By this time in his career, Frank had well established himself as the artist to call for epic, larger than life visuals, whether it was comic covers, movie posters, or even album art. ABC knew that Frank's style could bring a powerful visual punch to their promotional campaign. In 1978, Frank created four oil paintings for a spotlight appearance in TV guide ads. The artwork was classic for Zeta. These pieces are titled Battlestar Galactica Scramble, Attack, In Pharaoh's Tomb, and War of the Gods. A few years ago, I learned a bit more about ABC hiring my grandfather for the Battlestar promo art, and I even learned about his inspiration and process with the artwork, all thanks to a lovely real-life Frazetta girl named Sylvia Chow. She told me that she was married to Henry Len, who worked for ABC in the 60s and 70s. Henry was the art director who single-handedly convinced ABC to hire Frank for the Battlestar campaign. Sylvia said that the ABC executives were not too keen on hiring Frank. Can you believe that? They had to be convinced to hire Frank Frazetta. And I said to Sylvia, why? Why would they have to be convinced? And she explained it to me. In ABC's defense, there were a few reasons why. Frank was known for being very particular about his work, especially when it came to retaining ownership of his original artworks. And naturally, ABC wanted to own the artwork outright. And well, Frank wasn't having it. So yeah, it took some convincing. A week or so after ABC finally agreed to Frank's ownership terms, Sylvia and Henry visited my grandparents at their Pennsylvania estate. They rode Henry's motorcycle into the country, and when they arrived, they were greeted by my grandparents, they shared a meal together, and had a great conversation. Afterwards, my grandma took Henry on a tour of their 68-acre property, and my grandpa, my good old grandpa, asked Sylvia if she would do some modeling for one of the Battlestar paintings, because inspiration struck. Now, It was really rare for my grandpa to use models. He almost never used models, but I think he was truly inspired by Sylvia's, her form. Yes, Sylvia's form. He and my grandma both agreed that Sylvia looked a lot like a real life Frazetta girl. So naturally, Sylvia could not pass up the opportunity to join my grandpa in his home studio. Sylvia told me they spent the afternoon laughing and chit-chatting And all the while, she was so nervous to be in his presence. She said that he was so handsome and he was definitely a man's man, yet he was very respectful. Here, side by side, we can see the inspiration and Sylvia's story definitely checks out. I also want to note that Sylvia was not the only model for this painting. Ellie, the OG Frazetta girl, graciously put on a helmet and pranced around my grandpa's studio while he snapped the perfect angles and then developed the film in his darkroom. Ellie also posed for this Battlestar Galactica painting known as In Pharaoh's Tomb. While sorting through old family photos, I actually found this and thought this pose looks really familiar. And what do you know? Here's the connection. After Frank was finally finished with these four paintings, the ABC executives called and requested a few changes. And it wasn't a great idea when they were already skating on thin ice. The changes, well, they told Frank that he needed to soften the nipples, tone it down a bit. They also didn't love how prominently the buttocks were featured in Scramble. So overall too sexy. Frank told them no. 
He said he would not make those requested revisions and he held strong. With their tails between their legs, they backed off. A few days go by, they call again, and they basically ask the same thing. And well, that's when my grandfather got really angry. He lost it. And he said to them, screw you, I will just keep the paintings, fuck your show. Awkward. Thankfully, Henry, God bless Henry, he was able to smooth things over with the executives and Frank and the paintings were used and oh, glory, glory, thank the Lord, because these TV Guide ads were seen by millions of people. To give you an idea of how big this was, TV Guide was the highest circulating magazine in America at the time, reaching more people than any movie poster or comic book cover that Frank had done up to that point. It was a huge platform for his work. And fun fact, even though Frazetta declined to do these changes, they ended up softening the nipples when these were published. Premiering in 1978 on ABC, the show initially did pretty well in the ratings, but the big issue? the cost. Battlestar was an expensive show, costing about a million dollars per episode. For context, most TV shows at that time had budgets around $45,000 per episode. That kind of overspending could not be sustained, and the show only lasted one season. But Battlestar Galactica wasn't just in competition with its budget, it was in direct competition with Star Wars. And of course, that led to some legal drama. In 1978, 20th Century Fox, the studio behind Star Wars, actually sued Universal Studios, the producers of Battlestar Galactica, claiming that Galactica had ripped off 34 ideas from Star Wars. It wasn't just the space battles or the visual effects. The lawsuits included claims about the entire tone and themes of the show. Universal countersued, saying Star Wars had lifted ideas from their 1972 film, Silent Running, and the 1930s Buck Rogers serials. The legal battles dragged on for years, but eventually both sides settled out of court. But the hell wasn't over just yet. Battlestar Galactica found itself tangled up in lawsuits over toys and even a tragic accident involving a toy that led to a recall. It was a turbulent time, to say the very least, and a tragic ending for executives and fans in an epic sci-fi battle. While we're on the hot topic of Battlestar versus Star Wars, there's a common question that I'm asked. It is, why did Frank turn down Star Wars but say yes to Battlestar Galactica? Well, this circles back to the beginning of why ABC almost passed on using Frank. When George Lucas visited my grandfather at his estate, he asked my grandfather if he would be interested in creating the concept art for Star Wars, and it sounded like a perfect fit. But Frank was very protective of his creative freedom and his original artworks. And Lucas, unlike ABC, would not agree to those terms. So Frank declined the offer. In his own words, taking the Star Wars job and not retaining the ownership of his original art would have been taking a step backwards. That's all for this episode of Frazetta Fridays. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel and as always drop your comments below because I love hearing from you all.